Hello, very good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. You can do better than that. Good evening. Lovely and a very warm welcome. It's super to see so many of you here today to join us on this wonderful day. Um, we've been very blessed uh, today because not only have we had a fabulous wedding uh, and uh, hopefully a brilliant wedding reception this evening, um, but uh, my son Ben and his lovely daughter Anna have also given birth to their first child. Um, so we've become grandparents for the third time again today, uh, which is uh, quite momentous, really. It was sods law, it was all going to happen on the same day, really, wasn't it? But you can clap if you want to, you know, don't mind. It's lovely, isn't it? So, if you're ready for this, it's speech time, and I have the great honour of starting this evening off. You might regret that, Steve. Um, but distinguished guests, those of lesser or no distinction, family, close relatives, distant relatives, in-laws, outlaws, friends, friends of friends, acquaintances of friends, freeloaders, and anyone else who's turned up for a free meal. My name is Kerry Applin, and I am the very proud father of the beautiful bride, Melissa. Loud. And on behalf of my wife, Sue, and myself, it's a real pleasure to welcome you all to the wedding celebrations of Steve and Melissa Ferret. Now, having spent many years of my life living in a house with five women, there have been few opportunities when I've been allowed to speak, and even fewer opportunities when anybody has actually listened to me. So clearly this is a new experience and I intend to make the most of it. So how did we come to be here today? Well, two people fell in love and we all showed up. Now my wife Sue decided to join the gym and she wanted somebody to go with her. She asked Mel if she'd like to join, but in typical Mel fashion, she really wasn't bothered. But eventually she decided to go and funnily enough, she was soon very keen. <laughs> I should explain that uh, Sue, Melissa and I went for a few days skiing in Switzerland and it was there that I was first introduced to Steve. He was not actually with us, but Mel was always texting and telling us about what food, said we, uh, what food Steve said we could eat. A photo of the food was sent to Steve and we had to wait for his reply before we could tuck in. Steve said it's okay to have this big plate of chips. Steve said it was okay to have pasta. Steve said, well, you get the picture, don't you? My food was getting cold, and I wasn't sure if I liked Steve telling me what I could, could or couldn't eat. Now, as most of you know, Steve works as a personal trainer at Nuffield Health. When he first joined the gym, you're offered an induction, a health MOT, blood test, that sort of thing, heart rate. Now Mel had her MOT prior to skiing and told Sue to ask Steve to do hers. Now normally, the MOT is just done between the new gym member and the personal trainer. But on this occasion, Mel decided to tag along with Steve and with Sue. Now I wonder how many son-in-laws meet their future mother-in-laws for the first time by taking her blood pressure her weight, her measurements, and then drawing blood by pricking her finger for cholesterol tests. Now, Steve, of course, was the ultimate professional, but Mel made gooey eyes behind his back, and there was lots and lots of laughter. <laughs> Following this MOT, Steve then wrote to Nuffield to say how professional and helpful Steve was. You wrote the letter. Sue wrote the letter. Sorry, Sue wrote the letter. Get it right. This glowing report, this glowing report, was then read out to all the staff at a morning meeting. Nothing like buttering up the future son-in-law, was it? <laughs> now, Mel told us that Steve was the one. Oh, try that again. Mel told us that Steve was the one. Oh. Lovely. I'd never heard her speak about any of her other boyfriends that way before. But then again, none of them were called Steve, were they? No. <clears throat> now today is, of course, a celebration, not just of the love that has united Mel and Steve in marriage, 
but also of the two families that have created, moulded and influenced the lives of these two very special people. Kevin, give us a wave. Give us a wave. That's it, Kevin at the far end. This is Steve's dad. Since the first day we met, Steve has been an absolute credit to you, Kevin. He was polite, well-mannered and an extremely likeable young man. Kevin, it's been great getting to know you and your lovely family, Lisa and Liam and the girls, and we look forward to getting to know other members of your family and friends here today. Having already been blessed and having two other children married, I realised how important it is to know your new in-laws. So Kevin, I do have to admit that it was a bit over the top for me to arrange for my son Ben and his wife Anna to move into their new house dead opposite your home. And I mean dead opposite. Front door to front door. You can't be too careful about your new in-laws. And we just set up the security cameras and we were just about to place the listening bugs in position. And then I found out that you were a Liverpool supporter. Yes, good lad. <laughs> I can't tell you how proud of you Steve is. And I know he really appreciates all the love, advice and support you've given him. Now this whole wedding has been meticulously planned by Mel and Steve and all documented in a black wedding planner and has been financially regulated by updated spreadsheets and spreadsheets to check spreadsheets. <laughs> Steve has been so attached to these that it would not surprise me that if he bought these spreadsheets with him today instead of his speech. Now, I've also noticed that Steve is a bit of a gadget freak. Sat-nav, mobile phone, iPad, etc. If it's small, takes control and gives out non-stop information 24 hours a day, he's got to have it. I can see now what attracted him to Melissa. <laughs> when Steve asked me for Melissa's hand, I replied that he could actually have all of her and then pointed out the no returns policy attached to the agreement. I wasn't in a position to say no anyway, as Steve was giving me some personal training. And he obviously took great delight seeing me go anaerobic, i.e. red in the face, gasping for breath, and having a heart rate of 180 beats per minute. I really wasn't going to say no, was I? Although it's overwhelming to give your daughter away, it's also satisfying to know that she is marrying one of the nicest men I've ever met. If I had to choose someone for her to be with, I wouldn't pick anybody else. For what it's worth, Mel, your mum and I think you've made a cracking choice. <laughs> Steve, Mel has always deserved a good husband. How lucky you are to have married her before she found one. <laughs> In all seriousness, this is an important day for me. It's the day I resuscitate my bank account and hand over Mel's spending habits to somebody else. <laughs> now, Melissa, I believe that tradition dictates that a dad should share a few stories about his daughter. Now, I know Melissa is particularly nervous about this. What I might say... After all, it's part of my job description as father of the bride to embarrass my children, and I'm particularly good at it. You can relax, Melissa, it's okay. I'll wait until we're on the dance floor before I start, okay? <laughs> I feel extremely lucky and humble to be able to say that I have a brilliant son and four wonderful daughters. Seeing them here today gives me a great pleasure and reinforces the deep sense of pride I already feel today. Sue and I have both been very lucky to be brought up in loving family environments, a tradition we hope we have followed, and this support continues today with both of our mums and sisters, with all our families here this evening. Mel, Steve, they will always be on your side because they know no other way. Earlier as I accompanied Mel to the church, there could not have been a prouder man as we walked side by side to the altar. I thought, and I'm sure you'll all agree, that Mel looked absolutely stunning. Yeah. And Steve, well, he just looked stunned. <clears throat> it brought tears to my eyes today when I heard Melissa say, I will, with a great big smile on her face. And that was without arguing, arguing or moaning, which is actually a real first as well. <laughs> so our little bundle of joy, 
joined the Aplin family on the 18th of April 1994. As it turned out, the middle of our five children. She was a good baby. Mel never cried for a feed. She makes up for that now. Uh, she always held hands and waited patiently in any situation. And you will be surprised to learn Melissa was not always the beautiful woman you see today. For the first few years of her life, she was a real tomboy. She loved her football and was always trying to tackle a big brother Ben and playing football with all of his friends. She made a great goalie. She wore Ben's passed down Aplin number 12 England top for years. And she was also known by a different name. When asked her name, she would reply, My Lissa. Well, My Lissa loved dogs, and the film in particular, 101 Dalmatians. She had a Dalmatian coat, Dalmatian hat, Dalmatian lunchbox, Dalmatian shoes, you name it, it was all Dalmatian. She loved animals, and I know that today she would like to remember her first two dogs, Pippa and Lucky. When Lucky had to be put down three years ago, we were all in mourning. He was 17 years old and was our big brown bear of chocolate Labrador. After three days, Sue and Melissa went out to a breeder to purchase another chocolate Labrador. <laughs> this small bundle of fur with long ears stole their heart and Millie made an entrance into our lives. The only problem was that this chocolate Labrador was in fact a Springer Spaniel. <laughs> Moral of the story, don't let two blondes go out together. You never know what they might bring home. Steve, yes. <clears throat> Although Melissa was an easy child, if she was upset, she would just say, fine then. And she could have a moment, like when she pinched Nanny Angela. And Nanny Angela then called her a little firework. Melissa asked us, why do people call Nanny Angela a weirdo? <laughs> now, we already knew the answer to that, but was a bit confused how Melissa had come to the same conclusion. What she meant to say was, why is Nanny Angela called a widow? <laughs> I like the first question first. She hated reading. I had many a painful evening trying to get a sound out a word and all she would do is sit there with her tongue in the side of her mouth. For hours. You loved reading, didn't you? Perfect. She wasn't actually always perfect. My Lissa did run away from home when she was three. Sue had returned home in the car and wanted to get all the children in the bath. They all went upstairs, but Melissa was nowhere to be seen. Sue was frantic with worry and had no idea where to start looking. She called the police, and then all of a sudden, Melissa started walking back towards our house. We had no idea where she'd been. It was a few days later that Sue spoke to her neighbour, Corinne, who told her that Melissa had seen her at the front door, uh, came in, went in to say hello to a dog, had a chat with the dog, walked out with saying a word, and then came home. As I said before, she loves dogs, and we were just pleased to have a home. Our family trips to Molsey, to see my mum and all of our cousins were always fun. She loved visiting them, and in particular Luke, who kept some rather interesting pets. Instead of the usual guinea pig or rabbits, they kept ferrets. <coughs> ferrets. Mr. and Mrs. Ferret, think about it. Rather unfortunately, she struggled to pronounce the word ferret. Instead, it was pronounced Serret. So the question is, will you be known as Mr. and Mrs. Ferret, or will it be Mr. and Mrs. Serret? Well, Melissa, today you have fulfilled a dream and you have your own ferret. Make sure you look after him, clean his cage once a week, and keep his food and water topped up. One day, Melissa was transformed from a toy boy by her sister, Rebecca. We came home to Melissa in a dress and all made up. She looked beautiful, but from that point on, the house was covered in a fine brown slime. This was her makeup. It was on the floor, 
on the handles, on the walls, and this trend continues today, and her car's covered in it. When, we finished, when she finished school, she worked hard and completed her hairdressing apprenticeship at Creations, and has trained Steve to now colour her hair. She now works at Paxo, looking after children with learning disabilities, and we are very proud of you, Melissa. On the back of this, she's just launched her own business called Ferrets, providing support and fun activities for young adults with learning disabilities, supporting them to do all the normal things most young adults take for granted, such as trips to the cinema, pub meals and shopping. They all love her, as do their parents, who get valuable res respite, knowing that their children are safe in her hands and having lots of fun. Melissa, there have been very few times in my life when I've been absolutely speechless. One time was the moment I first set eyes on your mum. Another was when I saw you today looking absolutely stunning in your wedding dress. And again this morning when you told me exactly how much it was going to cost me for the day. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing about weddings is that as the father of the bride, you can show everybody how generous you are. So I wanted to give you all an itemised bill so you could see how much I'd spent. And uh, Sue told me that wasn't the, good, the done thing and I shouldn't be doing that today. Now I think about the point where I'm also supposed to pass on some worldly advice to my new son-in-law to help him survive, sorry, help him enjoy <laughs> his new marital status. Now that you're married, Steve, people will want to give you lots of useless advice. And I want to be the first in the queue. Steve, you may not have realised this yet, but women and men communicate in different ways. Sometimes your wife will ask you a question and then you have to decipher what she wants you to do. <laughs> Melissa might say, does anybody fancy a cup of tea? Translation, make me a cup of tea with a biscuit as well. Or Melissa might say, are those your pants on the floor? Translation, pick them up, put them in the laundry basket, and while you're there, make the bed, clean the bath, do the ironing and the washing up. So Melissa, if you speak in code, keep it simple for us males to understand. Now, Melissa, Steve, I need you to participate in my speech now. So, Melissa, please put your hand on the table. And Steve, would you like to put your hand on top of hers? You enjoying that? Yeah, good. You should be. It's the last time that you'll get the upper hand in this relationship. <laughs> Well, Steve, I have some further pearls of advice, and I hope you'll find these of use. Really enjoy your honeymoon period. And if you're not sure what that is, let me explain. That is a time in your marriage between I do and you better. Based upon knowing my women as I do, I believe the words, yes, love, of course you can buy it, may prove beneficial. <laughs> and remember that a man who gives in when he is wrong is a wise man. But a man who gives in when he's right, well, he's married. <laughs> Marriage is an important commitment. So much so that you need a mortgage to pay for it. But it takes more than that. It needs patience and compromise. And I should know, I've been patiently compromising for years. Mel, Steve, take a long, hard look around this room. Enjoy this moment as you take it all in. Everybody in this room is here because they wish to send you into marriage with their love and their support. You've taken sacred vows today. Keep them in your heart and at the centre of your marriage. Remember to love constantly, accuse slowly, forgive quickly and share everything. Be each other's best friend. When children, well, <clears throat> when children find true love, parents find true joy. Steve, Melissa, here's to your love and our joy from this day forward. Finally, I would like to propose a toast to the happy couple. And I know that everyone here will want to join me in raising your glasses in a toast to a very long, happy, and healthy future. So would you all please upstanding, be upstanding, and raise your glasses 
Ladies and gentlemen, the toast is our new bride and groom, Mr. and Mrs. Ferret. Mr. and Mrs. Ferret. <clears throat> okay. Steve, you've got to put this on. Perfect. Pop that in your pocket. Nice and slowly, keep the microphone nice up towards your face. Just keep it. Hold the mic. Okay. 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 Hello, I'm on. One, two. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to start by saying my wife and I <laughs> would like to thank each and every one of you for coming to share and celebrate our amazing day with us today. It really does mean a lot to have all of our friends, family with us on this special day. And thank you all for your kind cards and generous gifts too. Uh, it really means a lot to us. We really appreci appreciate it. We know obviously the football is on today, so we appreciate everyone coming and um, participating with us rather than being distracted by that. So thank you very much for being all here with us. And may I take this opportunity on behalf of myself and my amazing wife to thank Kerry for such a fantastic speech and how I'm going to follow that, I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Um, I would like to say a massive thanks to Kerry and Sue for not only everything they have done to help Mel and I plan this perfect day, but for being such an amazing father and mother-in-law. I'm not only so proud to be married to such an amazing wife, but I am also so proud to be part of such an amazing family. I couldn't believe how lucky I was in meeting Melissa. Straight away, I knew that I wanted to marry her. She did and still does every day take my breath away with how beautiful she is and I'm so admirable of how kind, selfless and amazing she is. I really am very lucky and I thank God every day for joining us together. As I met Kerry and Sue, I'm sure those of you here that know them would agree with me when I say I couldn't believe how lucky I was again. They both are so welcoming, friendly, helpful, caring, and they really are just amazing. The list goes on. I really felt like I was accepted and taken into the family and made to feel at home and loved straight away. It meant so much to me. And even after I came over to help Kerry take an old bathroom suite out, ready for the new one, and we managed to keep the brand new carpet of two days old absolutely spotless, <laughs> despite running buckets of broken plasterboard, a sink unit, a bath unit, a shower unit, and loads of rubble up and down the stairs until I turned to pick up the last bucket at gone midnight, and I knocked a whole cup of coffee off the top banister that hit every <laughs> ledge step and brand new piece of carpet from top to bottom, which meant we all spent another half an hour clearing it up. But we managed to do it, and I was welcomed back, so I'm really pleased about that. <laughs> uh, despite that uh, coffee mishap, we've had lots of successful project attempts. Kerry helped Mel and I make our photo booth, which is outside, and we really uh, hope that you, if you haven't already had a chance to use it, we all get a chance to use it today and take some brilliant photos. And if you do, we're grateful for sending them to Mel and I so we can enjoy them too. So, Kerry and Sue, I can only thank you both for being so amazing and for treating me as part of the family. From the start, words don't do justice to how much it really does mean to me. Kerry, I would like to say thank you in giving me your blessing in asking Melissa to marry me. I'll never forget standing in Kerry and Sue's kitchen whilst all the girls were at a Little Mix concert for Grace's birthday and shaking nervously asking Kerry for his blessing to ask Melissa's hand in marriage. And I remember he said to me, Steve, I have never seen Melissa as happy as she is with you. And that is what's important to us. It would be our pleasure. And I would like to say to you both that I promise to do all that I can to continue that happiness. So again, I'd like to say a really massive thank you to you both for all that you do and all that you have done. All the late nights doing guest lists, invitations, church plans, dresses, flower ideas, organising the setup with this hall, which looks fantastic, and so much more. We really couldn't have made today as special and as perfect without your help. So I know I speak for both of us when I say we really do appreciate everything from the bottom of our hearts, 
not only in helping us plan for today, but the constant love and support daily. I know we both feel very lucky and very blessed to have you in our lives. Kerry sent me a text message the day before my birthday, and at the end of the message he put, I'm looking forward to introducing you as my son-in-law. I can't put into words how much that meant to me and how honoured I felt. And I'd like to say to you both that I am proud and so privileged that I feel that I'm able to introduce you both as my mother and father-in-law. Um, now, we done presents earlier on uh, during the week for um, our parents because it was the evening we were doing speeches, but I know there was a special present that someone would like to give. So if you could get that first one for us there. And if we pass that down, Kerry, this is for you, and it's from a certain special person who would also like to borrow the microphone for a, a minute. So I might introduce my amazing wife. <laughs> yes. I wrote um, my dad something I was going to give to him before he was walking down the aisle, but I read it to my sister and she was like, read it out, read it out, and I'm whatever expect me to read out, so I'm really shy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, sorry if I get it wrong, but it says, Dear my daddy, so the day has come where I will walk a very special walk with you, one I'll hold in my fondest memories. As I look back over my life, I realise how fortunate that I am to, to have you to guide me, to tell me off attention or slamming doors when I'm angry, or telling me to go, get home before it's dark, even though I really didn't want to. But some days when Mum would be at work, and you would work so hard to make sure everything was nice for Mum when she arrived home. But that meant throwing all the children into it too. <laughs> <laughs> um, we became gardeners, bathroom cleaners, we had to knock down walls, clean the pet's cage, worst of all, sock matches. <laughs> <laughs> but we had strict rules about the socks. Make sure they're the same colour, size, thickness, and it goes on. But maybe this is the reason I found my soulmate. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all these jobs would be worth it when you would need to go to D&Q and you'd always treat us to a burger and some onion rings. I often look back at when I would love to play football with you in the garden, thinking I was really good when I tackled you and got the ball of you, or feeling like Lewis Hamilton when you would put me on your lap and let me steer the car while she parked into the drive, and feeling like the best gymnastics ever when you would let me hold your hands as I walked up you and did a flip. You have been there every step of my journey so far. Every football match I've played in, I would always be so proud and supported that you shouted at me from the sidelines. Every time I had a problem or was upset, you would always make sure I was okay, even after a long day at work. As I look back over my life, I realise my life has been amazing. I'm so lucky for everything you've given me. I realise how fortunate I am to have had opportunities and experiences you've provided me. My favourite family memories are the countless holidays we have been on. Um, had together, no other family has had those opportunities to travel as much as we have. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful, thankful for all, all I've lost it, for you making a priority to spend that important family time together and to experience different cultures and areas of the world. I hope to carry on that tradition and take the opportunities to travel on holiday with my family. All of my experiences and opportunities have not been possible without, without you providing daily for me and our family. You've always been a model of what, what it means to work hard and earn a living. I'm so thankful for your example of determination, persistence and a strong work ethic. Your example has taught me to always give my best effort and to value the accomplishments I have made. As I grow older, things change and new people come into our lives. But I'll still miss when you would tuck me in at night with silly things to make me giggle before I went to sleep. And hearing you coming from work and counting how many lights were left on, and most importantly, I'll always remember to never put non-stick pans in the microwave. <laughs> Thank you for saying yes when Steve asked for permission to marry me. I am so blessed to be able to have the wedding on my dreams. You have been so generous and I know my day will be the most beautiful because I have found the love of my life who I get to marry. Celebrate this with my family will be the most wonderful thing I can hope for. You have made me who I am today and I hope I make you as proud of me as I am of you. Just like how it's impossible to measure infinity, it's impossible to, to thank you for all that you have done for me. People say that this is goodbye or a part of responsibility 
from you to another man, but that I'll need you more than ever. So I'll carry with me this far, and believe me, I won't be far away. You're so precious to me. I love you so much, Dad. Love you, daughter. Oh. <laughs> so, um, some of you may know that I've not technically got a best man. My dog Phoenix was appointed the position originally as a ring bearer and the best man, but due to other commitments, I think he's at home watching the football, that he couldn't be here today. I've got loads of really great friends that mean so much to me that could have filled the role for best man for me. But when I sat and thought about it, there's only ever really been one person who has seen me grow up from the start till now, and that's my dad. So I'm really sorry you've got to listen to a speech from him next. <laughs> I'm only joking. But on a serious note, I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you to my dad for everything he has done for me growing up and continues to do for me today. He's always done his best for me, and I really am grateful for everything. Those of you who know us well know that we don't tell each other how much we appreciate one another or how much we love one another. We just kind of take it as an unwritten rule. But I'd like to take this opportunity now to say that you really are appreciated and loved and thank you from the bottom of my heart for being my dad and for always being there for me when it counts. But if you say anything horrible in your speech, I'm taking it all back. <laughs> 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 But you really do mean the world to me, Dad. And like I said, thank you for always being there when I need you. Thank you for teaching me lessons in life. I've seen you go through some testing times over the years growing up, and I've seen how strong a character you really are, and I'm really proud of you. I wouldn't have been able to be the man I am today without you, so from the bottom of my heart, thanks, Dad. So uh, this next bit of my speech may be a little bit difficult for me to get out. Um, I might find it a bit emotional. Um, so please bear with me, but I will do my best. Do I want emotional? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Traditionally, as part of the groom's speech, the groom gives thanks to his mum and dad. But in my speech, I would like to thank, as well as my dad, my grandma Rose. I'd like to say thank you for always being a solid rock in our family. No matter what is ever going on, you can always rely on a great welcome and a proper hug. And if you time it right, you can pretty much guarantee a cup of tea and a big slice of homemade cake. <laughs> when, uh, when we were younger, we would go to my grandma and granddad's every weekend. And I'm really grateful for the lessons that they both taught me, probably without even knowing that they were doing so. So I'd just like to make a point of saying thank you to you both for everything you have done for me and taught me. I'll take these lessons as I've learned from you both with me through life and hopefully I can teach the same lessons to our children and our grandchildren. Um, and Mel and I have got a little present for you. Um, Dad, do you want to run it over? It's just something to say thank you and uh, to make a point of saying that you're loved and appreciated. <laughs> as well as saying thank you to my grandma Rose Mel and I would like to say a big thank you to Nanny Rose and Nanny Angela for both doing us proud of your readings in church this afternoon they were really special to us and for those of you who didn't get to hear them or sorry those of you who did get to hear them I'm sure you would agree that they were read out beautifully we are both really grateful you both did us so proud a really big thank you. And we also have a little something that we'd like to give you to say thank you to. So if you'd like to give them out as well, Dad. Thank you very much. Yeah, they've got their names on them. Give them to both to Nanny Angela. Fantastic. My next thank you goes to Mel's lovely bridesmaids and our fantastic flower girls. 
I'm sure you'd all agree that they all looked amazing and look amazing tonight and have done a great job today in helping Mel get ready and supporting her throughout the day. So a really big thank you to you all and a special thank you to our flower girls who were absolutely brilliant in throwing the petals down the aisle for us today. You all did us really, really proud. Massive thank you to you all. I'd like to make a special thank you to Becca for our wedding cake, which looks absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Lots of time and effort went into it. Yeah, absolutely brilliant, thank you very much. And thank you to Owen for helping us set up the, the drapes yesterday. We wouldn't have been here with such a fantastic setting if we didn't have that, so thank you very much for that, bud. So lastly, before I hand over to my dad for his few words, I would like to say my biggest thank you of my speech. And this thank you goes to my amazing wife, Melissa. <laughs> Simply thank you for being you. Thank you for everything you do without even thinking about it. One of my happiest times is when I can sit back in a situation and watch you being happy, hearing your giggly laugh, seeing your perfect big smile, seeing you really happy and having fun. I feel so, so proud of you and who you are. You are the most amazing person with the most amazing spirit and I feel so privileged that I get to go through life with you as your husband. Thank you for all the small things you do and for how thoughtful you are. I'm so admirable of how selfless and kind you are. You are so beautiful and perfect. You literally make my day from the minute I open my eyes and see you, I realise just how lucky I am. There's a saying from a very well-known Disney bear who loves honey and I'm a bit surprised I'm quoting Winnie the Pooh in my groom speech. <laughs> But it is really fitting. Winnie the Pooh says, life is a journey to be experienced. It's not a problem to be solved. And I'm really proud, excited, and grateful to experience this journey of life with you. So with everything I am, and with all the love in my heart, thank you. So would you all please stand and raise a toast to my amazing, beautiful wife, Melissa. About the, um, what we'd have mentioned about the motion signal, we're about the end. Right, don't do it, just do your speech and end. Then we'd cut the cake and dance. Yeah. Yeah? Right, okay. Is it on? Yeah. Ah, good evening, everybody. As you all realise by now that I'm the last resort, <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to say, um, a big thank you to Kerry and Sue for all their hard work behind the scenes that nobody has seen that they've done. They've worked tremendously hard. And a big thank you for your hospitality. That's brilliant. Thank you. And I'd also like to say a big thank you to the bridesmaids and the flower girls who looked absolutely beautiful today and they've done a brilliant job. So I would like to make a toast for them, please. So if you would raise your glasses to the bridesmaids and flower girls. Oh. And of course, there was only one princess of the day. And I think you all agree. Steve, you were OK, but <laughs> Mel, you look absolutely stunning. Oh, fantastic. Well, as you all know, Phoenix was going to be best man today, but unfortunately he couldn't make it. But I got a text. <laughs> it says, Stephen Mel, congratulations on your wedding day. I know you'll both be very happy, and I'm sure you can't wait for your honeymoon. He said, I wish you nothing but the best. And P.S., can I have your room? <laughs> no problem. Right, Stephen, I've got to change my speech now, haven't I? <laughs> You've done good. <laughs> well, what can I say? When he was born, he was a typical boy. Just what any father would like. And he didn't disappoint. He was mischievous. He was cheeky. He was lovable. He was horrible. He was everything. <laughs> but most of all, he was good. And I couldn't be prouder. And <laughs> I would say that on a a weekend when we used to visit my mum and go for a Sunday roast or whatever, and all the family would come round. 
he loved nothing more than pushing a little puffy in the middle of the room, standing on it, making everybody make sure he's got their attention, <laughs> and he would sing his nursery rhymes. Aww. But he didn't recite one or two. He recited all of them. A good half an hour later, and if anyone didn't pay attention, look out. <laughs> but yeah, he loved it, he was brilliant. And not only that, when he got a little bit older, they could see that he was quite intelligent. And his favourite game was running through the kitchen, opening all the cupboard doors, pots and pans everywhere, and playing the drums. That was funny for a while, but after a week, it got on my nerves. And I thought, right, I'll get him. I went to the shop, and I bought all these special childproof locks. They can't open covers, yeah. It took me about three hours to fit it all. 15 minutes later, all the covers were open, all the pots and pans were on the floor. No father likes to admit he was outsmarted by a three-year-old. <laughs> but it was true to say that, you know, he was very intelligent and everything he did, he excelled in. Almost to the point where once it got boring to him, he changed direction and go somewhere else. But that was Steve. As soon as he got bored, he was gone. He was magnificent at karate. He won so many competitions and he could have been the youngest black belt in our village. But as soon as he got bored of it, he gave it up, moved on to something else. But that, you know, that was the way he was going and as a father, you just try and follow their direction and lead them where you think's best. But it wasn't until sort of years later, really, and I, I can imagine, you know, <laughs> all sorts of things he could have done, but he didn't do. But there it is. That's how he was. But <clears throat> I must admit, I was, when I was growing up, I was just like him. But the only difference was that if I did anything naughty or got into trouble, I got a clip round the ear. But when he did anything naughty, my dad would turn around and say, leave him alone, he's all right. Don't be, don't be hard on him. And I thought, what? I couldn't get away with anything, but he could get away with murder. And that's what he was with the whole family. But I'll tell you now, his granddad loved him. And I know he's looking down on him today with great pride. <clears throat> That's, um, we moved on, he got older and he got into different things. And all of a sudden our situation changed and I think in a way so did our relationship. Because it, it wasn't so much father and son anymore, it was more like best friends. And I think we just muddled along and we just like, bounce off each other and you know that just seemed to work for us and I think that's exactly how we got along isn't that? Well, didn't it? Yeah <laughs> but having said that he did finally find his his calling if you like and that was the gym as you probably know and he gave that 24-7 if he could have done <laughs> he would have moved in <laughs> he was that passionate and I must admit, you know, he's so keen and so, well, 100% effort into everything that he does. And I'm really proud of him to what he's become today. <laughs> Thanks, mate. All right. <laughs> All right. We're going to the Yeah, and I'd, uh, I'd just like to say, if there's only one thing that I know about my son, and that's that all he's ever wanted in life is someone to love him as much as they love, if he loves them. And when he met Melissa, that's exactly what he got. So, all I can say is, let's raise our glass and wish the bride and groom love, happiness, and happy ever after. Bride and groom. <laughs>